are. It's yeah. the last episode of the season, y'all. <laughs> we made it. And I'm like, I can't even focus right now because we're so high tech right now. We I'm are so, so confused. <laughs> we are super high tech. We're way more high tech than we've ever been before. Yeah. Hopefully you can tell in the sound how amazing it is. I really hope so for the amount of money we put down <laughs> on this thing. <laughs> Oh my gosh, babe, I can't believe, like, yeah, we weren't, like, we had a whole year, like, season, because we just started the podcast this year, but, like, I know, and, like, a couple months ago, like, not even that long ago. But, but... I mean, I think the first season should be short, you know, like, like, let's just see if we're good, if everyone else is good, like, we're all. Yeah, I mean, how many downloads did we have? Um, Today, we got 5,000 downloads. We hit 5,000 downloads today, which is kind of crazy. Yeah, well, we started podcasting without even really knowing exactly what anything means. So we honestly, didn't even, we're like, oh, when we hit 1,000, we're like, I don't know, is that good? Is that bad? And someone I was like, what? I That's honestly amazing. honestly still don't know what any of it means. Like, I don't know what 5,000 downloads means. <laughs> like, is it good? I don't know what it's equivalent to. Like, I literally have no metric. I'm going to say it's good because um, we started out with, like... Bullshit mics. One mic. One mic. Um, it was my voiceover mic for my YouTube. Up it's in, fine. Up until last week. <laughs> yeah. This is and, exciting. And um, we didn't know what we were doing. Uh, it was DIY to die. Very punk rock. And we were just like, we're just going to throw it all out there. We don't know the proper setup. And if you listen from episode one to the last episode, we definitely got our groove. We got our groove. We've gotten a groove. Yes. We were very, very awkward in the beginning. Yeah. And I feel like it was a good first season. It was. It definitely was. (laughs) So this is Skate Day and it's a podcast by two skaters in love. Yes. Who couldn't have a baby. So they had a podcast. Yes. We had a podcast. It doesn't require the dirty... But we did it anyways. <laughs> I'm Shove. I'm Rebel. And together we are Shovel. Can you dig it? Can you dig it? <laughs> oh my god, Legs told me the other day at work, I was telling her about her tagline, and she was like, oh my god, I love it, it's so retro. And I was like... Retro? <laughs> it is, because who says, can you dig it like you did? I don't That's know. so 70s. Nobody. Us. When you're retro or you're just old, which is it? <laughs> <laughs> who knows? <laughs> But yeah, usually we do our fake ads, as y'all already know, but I feel like we need to do something a little special. Yeah, so today we're just talking about 2020, and we're talking about this last season, and we're talking about just everything that has happened in this year, and so we figured that we would shout out to the people that have decided to support us from day one, which is Blood and Thunder... And Project Pit Up. Yeah, y'all both believed in us when legit we were still working on believing in ourselves, so. Yes, and right now Rebel and I are decked out with our little fascinators slash little floral. We got floral decor. Hair clips that we chose to wear on our clothing today because it's a very festive episode. It's the end of the year party. It's a party. Party of two. It's the closest we're going to get to a holiday party this year. (laughs) <laughs> wah, wah. <laughs> uh, wah, wah. But yeah, Project Pinup, I am grateful for Heather, the creator of it, because I feel like that was the unexpected friend that Rebel gained out of this year. Yeah, I am very grateful for Heather and for Project Pinup 1, because Heather has definitely become a friend and like a person that I could talk to that I never, like I just, in the beginning of this year, I never would have ever known like I never would have ever guessed that I'd be like super close with this rad chick who lives in Phoenix um, definitely but yeah so like Heather writes sweet notes with every package she and does. rebel yeah. is a whore for a sweet note I am and she wraps things individually and I just like can't get over yeah, it yeah and like, she's punk rock she's and so dope yeah so definitely check out project pinup we'll put the link below and you can use code skate date and get 10 percent off everyone loves the deal everybody loves a deal <laughs> but yeah we just really want to thank blood and thunder and project pinup because they helped us push and be able to get this new setup which of course like does not pay for all of it but it's really it it's was an big... investment that we wanted to make in our No, can we talk about how big of a risk it is to be like, we're going to financially back this venture. Like, it's not like 
who are just like, yeah, let's up our game and like buy these like legit mics. Like now we're not going to hover over one mic and have all these issues. And now we have equalizers because <laughs> Rebel's way louder than I am. I'm so much louder. And now I just feel like now we're in it to win it. But like without Blood and Thunder and Project Pin Up, thank y'all so much for being the first two companies to believe, to in, believe us. in us. Yeah. And we love Blood and Thunder specifically because Blood and Thunder... Like, they literally believed in us just individually as skaters even before we decided to do a skate Mm -hmm. date. And so they've already, like, supported us. And we're just so, 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 so grateful. Yeah, and Project Pin Up believed in you before skate date, which is us. Because they were like, we should collab. And you made earrings with them. And And metal patches. Yeah, and now more earrings. Yeah, so that's definitely a win of the dumpster fire that is... 2020. Yeah. So, um, that was considered our fake ad section. It was just a thank you. But the love was not fake. Yes. So now we're going to go on to the real world. Oh my God. The dumpster fire's almost over. 2020 is fake news. The sad thing is, is like every time someone says that, I'm like, it's still going to be a dumpster fire. It's just going to be like half the year 2021. (laughs) Yeah. And like, I feel like in 2021, we kind of know how to deal with it because we've gone through all of 2020. Yeah. And then we get to be like, bye bye, Trump. (laughs) Yeah. Bye, bitch. I kind of hope he gets escorted out by security. I hope. I just want that image to be a real thing that's not just living in my daydreams. I want to watch that. Yeah. I hope that he like, he like is like, nope, I'm not leaving or like stays in the bunker. (laughs) And then, and then like halfway through 2021, when none of us have seen Donald Trump in like six months (laughs) and then one day it'll be like, someone was caught on the grounds of the white house and it's Trump. (laughs) <laughs> would you die? I would literally die. <laughs> he's like running it out, holding like a uh, alien in one of those he's jars like, of goo that's he's been like hiding unshaved. under there too. Yeah. <laughs> oh man! But yeah, I don't know. Like twenty twenty was crazy. How did it? How did it even start? Australia was on fire. Australia was on fire, and then was it the murder hornets? Did the murder hornets come before COVID? No, after. Oh, like Australia right after. was on fire, and then it was COVID. Yeah. And our last, like, we got one last rollout right before. And I remember it was, like, kind it of was, sprinkling. It yeah, was the it roller was, fit it was, one. It was to support people in Australia, right? <laughs> yeah. I, I think. I, it wasn't to support people. You would think, like, it was a rollout for the fires in Australia. No, it was a rollout for skin cancer, actually. Oh, that's right. Because Stacy's dad. That's what it was. Yes. From skin cancer. So we did like this whole, it was like a rollout around the world and each day was a different rollout somewhere in the world and it was to like raise money, raise awareness, and awareness for uh, skin cancer. And it was for the main um, hospital clinic. I'm sorry. I don't know. I'm a dumb bimbo sometimes, but in (laughs) Australia. (laughs) No, it's not even that. It's just that literally it's been so long. (laughs) Like, 2020 has been a decade-long worth of stuff. It's like you can't even remember what happened, you know? Yeah, but it was like, who would have known that we our last rollout? Yeah, and then we hung out for a weekend, and we saw Kiana Strip. Yes. And then we, like, had, like, a skate weekend. Yeah, we had, like, a skate weekend, and we saw our friends, like, three days in a row. It was kind of, it was really cool, because I felt like it was, like, a banger. It was, like... It really was a banger. We it wasn't. It would have sucked if we would have been like we it was a lazy month, and then we knew we had, were stuck on forcibly at home. Yeah, for ten more months. I just remember because th- I was supposed to go on a work trip on March like tenth or whatever, and I remember talking to someone, and they were like, "You're not gonna go on that work trip," and I was like, "That's kind of crazy. Like, are you sure?" And then it was my birthday, and we didn't really do anything for my birthday. And then the yep. next day, it was stay at home. Yep. And it birthday was like canceled. Birthday, birthday party full canceled. canceled. And so that was my first experience with the COVID, and I was like, "This is cool." <laughs> 
Yeah. And it was like, you didn't even, we didn't even know about like drive by, like people got real creative. They were, yeah. The people had all sorts birthdays. of like fun little birthday things, but we didn't know about that yet. Cause it was so fresh. Like it was literally that weekend. And so we just kept hoping that like, oh, my birthday will be in, you know, April and then, oh, it'll be in May and then it'll be in June. And then I was like, okay, my birthday yeah, is you, not happening. You, you weren't even supposed to wear a mask back then unless you were sick. I know. <laughs> Yeah. I was like looking at pictures and I was like, there was definitely COVID. How come we weren't wearing masks? And I was like, oh yeah, that's before they knew. Cause like everyone was learning as they were going. Yeah. Like, it was just a wild adventure. Yeah. I had like a breakdown at work because it was so crowded and I was like, there's a virus. And I didn't take it serious. I don't first. I was like, oh, I don't know. The news is just like, I was the one who took it, it the most serious. And then I was like, well, the news was so dramatic too. Like the music. I was like, I don't know. It was super bad. dramatic. It's it felt like we were watching the apocalypse happen. Yeah. Cause I was like, I'm not going to freak out until the CDC says freak out. And then I saw the CDC was like, this shit's real. And then I was like, <laughs> I like went from zero to 100 real quick. I could not stop checking my phone yeah. and updating the numbers. You really did. I was having panic attacks in grocery stores. At work, I was freaking out. I was washing my hands. Me and everyone that worked at Coffee Bean were washing our hands until they were like raw. It was not healthy. And everyone was a stress case. Customers kept coming in like it was no big deal. So I pulled all the furniture because I saw Starbucks did. And then I literally told my boss that if they let made me put the furniture back out, that I would walk out and close the store. <laughs> and it was all this whole thing. Which was the right move. I yeah. Mean. It ended up being for the better. Like, oh my gosh. Remember when I got furloughed and then I went on Instagram and I cried like a little bitch? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> then- I remember being like, you should just... I remember telling you to quit before you got furloughed. It was just scary when you get, like, furloughed or laid off and, like, you've been working since after high school. Like, I've always had a job or two jobs or three jobs. And to be like, oh, my gosh, like, what's going to happen and what? I have to go on unemployment? And then my pride got the best of me because I was just like, no, like, I've been taught, like, you just do whatever you can. Like, you hustle. You make it work. Like, Mm -hmm. you have to work. And then being able to just be like, okay, I'm just going to ride this wave. And then I think the funniest thing was like within 24 hours, I was supposed to go back to work finally. And Rebel was like, let's make a budget and was like, you can literally quit and survive. (laughs) Yeah, I was like, okay, babe, I know you're feeling kind of crazy right now, but I promise you with the money that you've got coming in from other sources, like you can last at least, I think it was until October. I think I calculated out through October and I was like, and if you keep making this much money, like you can survive, you can't spend any money on anything, (laughs) but like I can buy things and we can make it happen. And, um, and you were just, I think that was the okay you needed. Yeah, if it wasn't for a rebel, I would, like, probably still be... Well, no, because they ended up shutting yeah, no, down my store have. anyways. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I would have just been on employment again right now. But I definitely would have had more stress and would have went back and wasted my time and not have started focusing on my art and selling that. And... I mean, if there's anything that we have learned during this COVID time, it's that, like, so many companies don't give a fuck about their employees. <laughs> Yeah, or that, like, colleges still should pay same price for tuition, even though you're now online and your teachers are learning as they go. (laughs) Yeah, like, it's just, it's, yeah. (laughs) Yeah, but then, okay, so you quit Coffee Bean, and then you decided to do something else. What was it, babe? Yeah, and then I started Fat Femme Fatale, and I started selling art prints and stickers, which was pretty cool, and... That's something I wanted to do my whole life. And I think I just needed to slow down enough to really, like, be like, I can do this. And the support from the skate community was... Incredible. Uh, astronomical. Remember when everyone <laughs> pulled together to get you an iPad? Yeah, it was... I don't know. Like, I feel like the skate community just has really had my back and they really appreciate... Um, everyone says, like, I love everything you've done for the skate community. And sometimes I'm like... I haven't done anything for the skate community. And then, like, if I sit and do inventory, I'm like, oh, I have. And it's just yeah, because I love it so, so much. much for the in- skate community. It's because yeah. I love the skate community. Yeah, well, and the skate community loves you, too. <laughs> Thanks, me, but to you. Yeah, obviously. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I think, like, 
the other thing was that Moxie started hiring skaters, so that let me not have to go back to an essential worker job, which I'm very internally grateful for. Um, as well as my collab with the knee pads happened this year. So now a lot of thicker skaters have some safety. Yeah, it's awesome. And I think that Moxie, like, believing in you made it so that you could believe in yourself a little bit more. Definitely. Like, I literally was going to do that for free. Like, I didn't even know it was, like, an option to do for free, but I was just like, oh, this is just a thing. Like, hey, you should do this. And, yeah, I'll do my measurements. Like, I didn't even realize that I was, like, making a business deal and it happened. <laughs> yeah, it just kind of happened. But it inspired me to be like, not necessarily do more business deals, but to be like, what else can I put in the skate community that's lacking, you know? Like, mm -hmm. now I'm like, what else? Let's make it happen. Like, let's make everything in this skate community, like, accessible to all marginalized bodies. Like, what else can we fix? So Yeah, we'll for see. sure. Yeah, it was really awesome. And then how about you? Tell us about your year. Oh, my gosh. Well, this year has been so crazy for me. Um... Well, first thing I guess you would need to know about me is that I just straight up, like, can't chill out ever. Like, no. literally ever. <laughs> I just don't know how to chill the fuck out. You know go-go juice that they give, like, little kids that are, like, beauty pageants? I'm made of that. It's Rebel's blood. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mixed with glitter. <laughs> yeah. No, I just, like, I don't know how to stop. And so, for me, when the quarantine happened... Like, I didn't stop, but because I wasn't driving to three places that were, like, approximately an hour apart from each other every day, it did give me all this extra time. And so I felt like, oh my gosh, what am I doing? Like, I was going so wild. I was having, like, a breakdown once a month leading up to the quarantine, like, leading up to COVID. And I was yep. really stressed out and... You know, it was just because I felt like, you know, I had just graduated grad school and I felt like I needed to, like, make a life for myself and I needed to provide for my future wife and, like, all this sort of stuff, you know, like, I Ooh, needed to life. prove, yes, that I was, you know, successful or whatever the fuck. So, yeah. I don't know. Oh, that's bullshit. But, um, <laughs> so... When the quarantine happened, I had to learn how to teach online, and that was a, a very stressful <laughs> venture. Um, I was recording things, like lectures every day, and then I was, like, trying to sort out all these new online programs and on forums and, like, talking to every teacher I've ever no, met. No, but look. Rebel had a foot up because one, YouTube star, star of my <laughs> eyes anyways, and oh two, gosh. like what did you choose while you were in your last year of graduate school as your independent study? My independent study, my last year of graduate school graduate school was instructional digital literacy like she fucking knew there was about to be a pandemic and that every single school for the most part was gonna jump online talk about some pisces intuition yeah that's that's very true like i definitely had a leg up and so i was actually doing a lot of helping with other teachers so i was helping people in my departments and mm -hmm. like working to get things online for people. And I didn't have as much of a hard time with like the tech stuff. It was just a lot all at once. So my stress makes me think like, oh, people who didn't have my level of tech competency and internet uh, competency, like, ooh, like how much harder <laughs> must it have been for them? And so it was all about like trying to have compassion for my students, but also trying to stay on top of it. Anyway, so it was wild. And so... Um, yeah, I don't even know. Like I, I stopped working at one school and then I picked up another gig being a regional director of this company and no more derby. Then I stopped playing derby because derby just stopped. And so I ended up being really pent up with all of my like tension and everything. <laughs> and, um, I opened an Etsy shop and, my YouTube kind of exploded and, um, yeah, I don't know, like so many things happened. Oh, uh, like I was working with PRS for like a super long time and then that, it no longer was a thing. And so I'm like fully on my own now. So I'm like doing my own business ventures mm -hmm. and like working with other companies. So that's been really rad. Boss um, busy. I'm trying to. I'm trying to make boss moves because I would like to be a teacher at one location 
and then do like all this YouTube skate stuff. But in order to get there, I have to push real hard. So I've just been, I've been pushing real hard when it comes to content creation and like investing in my business and all that sort of stuff. So that's really where I've been putting my energy. Yeah. And for me, um, personally, like I feel like there's actually like a saved tab in my phone and it says, I changed like the thing instead of being the URL, it says, uh, go to fucking therapy. And that was put there, like, really early in the year. And I remember thinking, like, next year's the year. Like, I'll make sure. Like, I was thinking this last year. Like, I'm going to make sure I get therapy and A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And, like, but always have these excuses. Like, it's too expensive. Or, like, my health insurance is only going to cover three visits. Yada, yada, yada. All this stuff. Breakdown after breakdown. And little things that I just knew inside myself that, like, hmm, this isn't healthy. This isn't a healthy way to deal with this. But... Even if you look at my Instagram right now, you'll notice that I rarely post. I used to post all the time. And little things like that are just getting harder and harder to do. And I think the biggest step for me to wrap up this trash fire, dumpster fire of a year is that I finally have therapy and I've seen a counselor and they've already given me a prescription. So I'm excited to start that later this week and see if that helps at all. Hopefully my body works with it. And start, like, my real therapist, might meet my, like, actual therapist. Hopefully I like her, too. Um, <laughs> tomorrow morning. So I think that's, like, a really big thing for me because I hate asking for help and I hate talking about my problems. I'm so proud of you. <laughs> but I am ready to try to become the best version of myself and get back on track. And if I can inspire myself to be a better person, I can get back to inspiring all of you to be better people. I think that that's so awesome, babe. <laughs> I'm so proud of you. Yeah, it's really hard to, like, preach the word if you're not doing the word or whatever. For sure. No, <laughs> totally. Put your money where your mouth is. I think that, like, shove going back to, th going back to therapy, <laughs> shove going to therapy for me has been kind of like a, okay, maybe you can do it too. Like, I know that I need to go to therapy, but, like... I don't know. I just make excuses. So hopefully I can do that too. But that's kind of on that list. That's not one of the things that I've accomplished. First we find a therapist that lasts for two hours so you can talk all the time. Yeah, the that's way. the thing. I just want to talk and talk and talk and talk and talk. So I think if I could just get a diagnosis for all the quirky things I do, if there could be a reason behind that, that would make me feel like super good. Maybe you're born with it. Or maybe it's ADHD. <laughs> <laughs> I, we don't know, though. <laughs> we don't self-diagnose here on the Skate Tape Podcast. <laughs> exactly. I got over being like, I don't know, I think I'm depressed. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> I mean, no, we just think you're bipolar. Like, oh, okay. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> yeah. Well. But yeah, I don't know. Like, 2020, it's crazy because everyone was like, 2020, that's best vision. Like, 2020 is going to be the year. Like... You're going to see it. Everything's going to be clear. And then a lot of people are joking like, ha, ha, remember how we all thought that? But then if you really think about it, almost every single person that I, in my life and I've crossed paths with, their life has changed this year. Like, and it wasn't just like COVID changed their life and forced us. Like they chose to realign their life somehow because they were forced to slow down and see life differently. So they made a change in their career and their relationship, like something mentally or physically. But I feel like everyone changed something for the most part. No one just kind of like stayed and wrote it out. Like, I think like it was true. Like 2020 was the year to finally see. Which is just so wild. Like such clarity can be brought from just pausing life for a second and really looking at what's around you. Mm hmm. I definitely, I feel like I got clarity on my life being a wild mess catastrophe <laughs> and I just didn't even know it. Like I just kind of thought like I'm functioning, like I'm fine and I didn't realize that like I wasn't spending time with my partner, like I wasn't spending time with my dog, like I wasn't spending any time on myself. You were so busy and I hated it. One, it was like I love alone time but geez you were like constantly busy and then, like, you were freaking out about it. And then as soon as you'd have a meltdown and you'd be like, okay, I'm better now, you would pick up one more thing to do. <laughs> I know. It was really stupid. But I don't know. So I'm glad the world forced you to slow down a little bit and really see, like, what you wanted to do. 
And like, I know you're still not 100% sure what you want to do, but at least you're not like burning the candle at both ends like you were. Yeah, I'm starting to try and figure out like how important like working my butt off to try and get money is, you know, like I, I guess I thought that that was like the priority, like you work your ass off for the first couple years after you graduate and then like you're set. But in reality, like that doesn't stop. Like you just have to decide when you're going to set up your boundaries and like what's your personal life and what's your work life. And I think actually probably a lot of people learned about that this year because, you know, like I'm working from home now. I've been working from home since March 13th. Yeah. And now it's like, I literally have to be like, okay, at this time I am no longer working because the boundary like of like just being at work and then coming home, like it doesn't exist anymore. So you have to create that. So you have to decide how important your family time is, which yeah. is like a really interesting <laughs> concept. It's like, oh, you're still going to just keep going because you're at home or are you going to be like, okay, now it's time to hang out with babe and Bobo. <laughs> yeah. It's like how much pressure do you feel and like how much do you let that pressure get to you? Exactly. All right. So now let's head on over to the wheel world. So much happened in 2020 in the roller skate world. Holy crap. <laughs> All I can say is what was the first dramatic thing in the roller skate thing? Um, when you know the song, Fuck Donald Trump, I think it was Fuck PRS. <laughs> Fuck Andy Jones. <laughs> I think that's what the first part of uh, 2020 for roller skating world was. Yeah, that was the first, like, first of all. George Floyd got murdered by the police. And then, like, what, the very next day, Indiana Jones? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that was the first thing that happened. And if you don't know, look up the videos online because they'll tell you we're not going to go into detail of that. Yeah, but if you're a new skater and you're still supporting her YouTube channel and being like, oh, this roller skater in New York is so great, L educate yourself, please. As people that knew her personally. Yeah. No. Just, no. <laughs> people who, like, have been to her house multiple times. And... <laughs> yeah. So that was yeah. the first, like, oh, shit. And also, like, a huge, like... The skate community will not stand for this bullshit. Yeah, like the skate community does not stand for racism. Yeah. And like intolerance. Yeah, and proof that like, yeah, fuck cancel culture and all that stuff. But like, if you're called to do action, like if you're called in to be like, you need to fix this and educate yourself and apologize from your, the sincerity of your heart and make the world better from that point on, then do it. And not many people should be canceled. And cancel culture is like bullshit in so many ways. But racism, there's just, and like ignorance to an extent, then you're supposed, then yes, you're canceled at that point. It's, well, here's the thing. It was about, it's about the way that you re react to being called in. Yeah. Like, if you're called in or called out, like, you need to react and react in kind and, like, be respectful and listen and self, self-evaluate self and all of those things and then, like, respect the people mm -hmm. and, like, fix it. Not, not, you can't fix it, but, like, I don't know. Don't do... Leave the commute, leave the scenario and everything better than where it was even before you destroyed it. Don't continue digging a grave for yourself. Yeah. And then the next thing after that was we started having roller skaters have protests. Like yeah, in, protest roller skating. It was great to it see awesome. so many skaters like throw a mask on, gather, social distance, and peacefully protest. And do for the rise, rise in skates. Yeah. I made it to one. That was the first time I was around a lot of people. What's the protest? I for one day I protested all day long. Uh, we went, went to, to like three, three protests, protests one day. in one day. Yeah. Yeah, we wore our skates to the first one and the last one. And then um, we realized that wearing your skates to a protest is like, I don't know. <laughs> so the ones we were at was it was not the best idea. Yeah. There was like you couldn't even skate. You had to walk on your toe stops the whole time. <laughs> but it was great. It was great to see uh, that 
the, the skate community cared about the greater community, which is humankind. So, mm-hmm. yeah. and it did warm my heart, like also seeing like people around the world protesting for Black Lives Matter, not just America. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Like, there was something just so great about that, that skate. Like, and it kind of like, you feel like you're really in your body when you're skating already. And it was like a great way to just kind of like get your energy going and prepping you to fight for the rights of black people uh, for the rest of the day. So that's why I really liked the Rise and Skate. And like, there were other things that popped up too all over the country where skaters just went and like, you know, gathered and skated around with their signs. And it was great to see. Yeah, I mean, it's so important to recognize that, like, we are not isolated from the world being in the skate community, and I feel like people who are skaters were finally acknowledging that and, like, combining the skate community with the real world, you know what I mean? Like, (laughs) it wasn't just, like, a separate, like, skating isn't just an activity that we do, skating is a lifestyle, and then just because we skate doesn't stop us from being, like, me putting on skates, like, I'm a white person who skates, like, I still participate in oppression because I exist in a white body and, Mm -hmm. like, benefit from the system, and so, like, remembering that those two are tied and using skating to help work through that is, Mm -hmm. I think, I thought was really wonderful. Yeah, and then as people were protesting... Uh, people were also uh, buying roller skates so hot that we started having a shortage of not just roller skates, but like everything wheels, bearings, all roller skating things completely sold out everywhere. And you couldn't buy roller skates, even if you wanted to. And it was so wild. I've never... Like, I know. Like, I, we had to give mind. a bunch of people, like, toe stop, backup toe stops. Because it was, they were like, we can't get toe stops. We were like, well... Yeah, we can't get wheels or any of these things. And, like, um, yeah. That, that was... Well, the, like, nobody expected outdoor roller skating to be, like, the thing that everyone decided to do during the quarantine. Yeah, and that would be, like, the number one trend on TikTok. Yeah, and stuff. Like, like, so like, random. Yeah. Yeah, so, like, roller skating, the number one activity of 2020. Such a boom. (laughs) Such a boom in the number of people who decided to skate. And so now, like, if you go outside and you skate on the beach path or you skate anywhere, it's like there's so many roller skaters everywhere. (laughs) There is. I love it, though, because I feel like Long Beach, it was already getting to that point where, like, you were bound to see a roller Mm -hmm. skater. But now it was like, I remember the last time I went skating at the beach, it was like you saw people having skate lessons. There's going to be like one person with like 20 people that they're teaching how to skate. And you're like, there's so many new skaters out. It's crazy. And what's what's crazy is I felt like, and not to say that I like know everyone in the skate community, I definitely don't. But before 2020, I felt like when I was skating around Long Beach, you anytime I saw people skating, it was like I knew who they were. You know, like it wasn't like. A random person and now every time I skate I see people skating and they're people I don't know at all I'm like whoa which makes me so excited for when the world's open again and like that first rollout like oh I can't wait y'all I can't wait to throw my first rollout like it's not my first but like my first post-covid rollout like I want that shit to be so lit I want everyone and their mama to be there yeah (laughs) and their children everyone bring your Mm -hmm. auntie bring your daughter bring your dog bring everyone in some sort of wills and like to have that feeling of like unity again like oh i just miss that so fucking much yeah i miss it a lot too but yeah it'll be so great because now i'll be like oh my gosh like 80 percent of you i probably don't know and it's just like so cool because you can meet some of them online but it's it's Nothing not the same. Person. It's not the same. And people aren't the same online. Like, even when we try and be the same online, like, we try and be exactly the same online as we are in person. And, like, I don't know, you just can't communicate your full self 100% <laughs> you're, online. You know what you're making me think of, Bam? Oh, no. Oh, uh, in the year of 2020, day of our Lord, <laughs> that... Speaking of how skaters aren't exactly the same in person as they are online, I feel like this was the year that skaters were the most vicious. So vicious. Unforgiving. Mm -hmm. Just like tear your head off if you did anything online. Which, yes, some people may have deserved, but I feel like more negative came out of 
that than positive. And I think it's just because, and it'd be crazy because as soon as they found out what was really going on, all of a sudden they'd be so nice on your inbox, but they'd attack you. And be yeah, people were just attacking, attacking, attacking. Remember when everyone was like, you're not black, Shove. Yep. I had to take a social media break because... Where she literally cried all weekend. Yeah, that was when um, this one person that's not even really in the skate community anymore decided to, like, pull some pictures she had of Estro for, like, ten years. Like, who? first of all... Who, who holds on that? to pictures like that Talk for about that long? That's weird. Black note? Like what? Why wouldn't you just reveal them as soon as like, you found I them? I think this person's racist, but I'm gonna sit on it and be an opportunist and wait for the right moment to drop it. So just this person seems really weird decided, oh, since people are coming for indie, maybe now's the time that I'd be like, oh, this person's problematic too. And so they dropped some photos from ten years ago. And I'm sorry, I'm black, and from ten years ago, I have some problematic photos. Like I did to do Day of the Dead makeup for Halloween. Because no one knew the ignorance. Like, we didn't have access to all these things to really know, like, hey, that's cultural appropriation or this is bad. So even in your heart, if you thought you were honoring a culture or that it was just, like, a simple, lighthearted joke or, like, not even a big thing, a lot of us know that now and would never even think about doing that. But it was a different time. And I think now we're dealing with people that are younger than us. And are unforgiving because they they're raised to know like that's wrong. Mm-hmm. And for us, we had to we learn. We literally that. were not raised to know that that was yeah. Wrong. And our parents were like even way worse. Like we're millennials. We're the ones that had to have that transition to know what was wrong, what was right. So I feel like when that was happening, I took Esther aside because she had already had so much work for Black people in this last year. And I just like as my friend that people came for me and started saying that I wasn't really black. If I was like taking her side, they said that every black person that worked with Moxie wasn't really black. And that basically uh, like how dare us like take her side. And it was a whole thing. That was fucking hard for me. That was like the worst thing that happened to me this year. And I slipped into a really dark place and like just a whole like I didn't want to talk to anyone. And it took me a long time to even trust the skate community because like so many people were like, bad mouthing me and putting all this shit on like putting me in reddit groups and all this stuff and like even a youtube video and i'm a freaking human and like a lot the funny thing is a lot of them are like new skaters or people that haven't even been with the community that long and they don't don't know know her at all the work i've done for this community and like for like companies that trash us like real issues not things that like happened 10 years ago that were like problematic not even racist and like all this stuff so i was just like Wow. So I think that's when I learned like how vicious uh, this gay community can be. And I think it was just like a lot of displaced things or people being frustrated because it is COVID. And then like one person screaming some random ignorant thing and then other people just being like, yeah, without even really doing the research. I I definitely think that a lot of new skaters, no offense if you're a new skater or if you're like a COVID skater, quarantine skater, whatever, like a lot of new skaters, like, don't know the amount of work that so many of us who have been around here for a while, how much work we put into this community. And Rebel and I haven't even been in the community that long. Yeah, like, we are not even, like, OG OG. Yeah, it's only, like, three and a half years, which is nothing. Like, we're talking about Long Beach skaters we know have been skating for 10, 15 years, 20 20 years. years. Like, and the, the amount of work that they've put into the skate community and, like, the amount of work that you know, all the skaters have done just to keep the community alive because the, uh, the skate community has been alive for this whole time. It's It hasn't been just, like, revived in 2020. Yeah. Like, it's been alive and thriving. It's just trending now, but it's always been here. Yeah, and, and I think that it's hard that, like, I don't know, it's hard because you don't just know that. Like, you don't know that when you just see people on the internet and people deciding who's an influencer or whatever on the com- in the community based on follower count yeah. I think is like so the wrong approach because there are so many people that I know that I look up to like crazy who have literally helped build so many amazing things within the skate community and have barely any followers online so like people aren't going to know just by looking at their follower count you know but the community wouldn't be where it is today without them Yeah, the leaders in the skate community don't necessarily have large follower counts. Like, some of us do, but not everyone. Most of the people that are followers in the skate community, in my eyes, are the ones that are, like, hosting rollouts. And not just, like, let's have a rollout, but, like, it's really making sure that everyone is 
that it's accessible to everyone that shows up, that like the pack stays together, that everyone's having a good time, like it's good vibes all around, um, and that their rollout has like a genuine theme, like a message to it. There are people that are like helping raise monies for cause that are like putting together skating shops like Alex does. People that are like actively like making sure, like helping new skaters get gear, teaching them how to skate without even charging them, like just literally just there for the love of the community mm -hmm. and making sure that everyone feels welcome. Like you don't have to do that. Like, but some people choose to mm -hmm. like do that because they want that unity and they want everyone to like, feel welcome. And yeah. I feel like that's what takes someone to be a leader in the skate community. Not just be like, I'm a talented skater that does these cool dance things, but then I charge, like, if you want to even talk to me, like, slide in my DMs with a question, I'm going to send you my Venmo. Like, yeah. that's not a leader in the skate community. Definitely not. <laughs> uh, with your 200,000 followers. Yeah. <laughs> no but, shade. Uh, <laughs> oh, 2020. Yeah, 2020 <laughs> has really made me realize the people that I can trust and the people that I cannot trust. And, For like... For real. And that's a thing, too, is that, like... What I have realized is that so many people in the skate community are very young and we're on the older side of the skate community. Not to say that we are old, but just that we are not as young as so many other people. And like people don't understand that I don't forget what you say, <laughs> especially if you say some shit about shove. Like I will not be friends with anyone who said that shit about shove. I will not be. I will not be friendly to you in person. And I just... <laughs> what, what's so I'm stupid shook. about it, it's like the skate community is so large, but it's also so small. And especially when like it's local skaters, I'm like, bitch, we all skate in the same places. We all skate the same hill. We all skate the same beach path, the stupid lighthouse that everyone wants to skate to, the same rollouts. Like... We have one physical skate shop in Long Beach. We're gonna run into each other and it's gonna be hella awkward and you made it awkward. Yeah. And there's specifically at least one person I know, no, three people in Long Beach that I know they're gonna catch these hands if I see them. Yeah. <laughs> and it's just like so awkward. But watch. Bet when we're skating down the path and they're skating the other way, they're just gonna keep on skating. They're not even gonna look at me in the eye because... They know. They know I did nothing. And she did nothing <laughs> and people came for her neck. But I just felt like the ignorant people are the loudest, unfortunately. It turns yeah. out to be that way. And sometimes I just gotta remember like not to stoop to people's levels. Yeah. But Anyways. Another so, big thing. Another big thing that happened in this game. Another community. big thing. There was so much. So much stuff happened in um, 2020. There used to be. Well, they're still there. Moda skates. Oh, Moda used to be a thing that some people supported. Yeah, and there were, like, a lot of derby players, and even in the Black Roller Derby Network, which, yes, is a thing, um, they were canceled. Like, their skaters dropped out because they, first it came out that they had made a Blue Lives Matter skate for someone, and then they tried to, like, erase that it ever happened. So when asked about that and like their horrible supposedly support for Black Lives Matter, they got super defensive and then all of a sudden they flipped the script. They came for me and then blocked me and then I was like, hold up. So then I sent other people over there. Well, I didn't send them, I post it and sometimes I post things people are like, let's go see what show's talking about. So they just flocked <laughs> over there and then they were like, hey, why are you deleting people's comments? Um, what's going on with A, B, and C? And then they just kept blocking everyone, which is Hello. The worst thing you can do. I don't know why companies keep doing this. Hello, why you uh, keep... Impala. Hello, <laughs> Hammies. Um. Why do you keep, like, turning off your comments and, like, coming for individual Seriously. people? Seriously. So then they just were like, well, screw it. If you can't beat them, join them. So they started posting all this, like, Black Lives Matter is a scam. Like and... this All Lives Matter shit. Yeah, and they were just and like... And then they changed their name to, like, their team to, like, the Patriots yes. or something like so that. their whole team left because everyone was, like, literally, like, scraping out off the name Moda, off their skates. And then they made, they made a team and they found, like, the one black skater that had been kicked out of two roller derby leagues for being a white supremacist and also working security at a straight pride. That's how bad Moda skates is. They And then they found, like a uh, brown person that was a Trump supporter. So basically they were like trying to find people of color that were Trump supporters or like full of self-hate. It was like, 
It it's was so cringe. It was so cringe. Oh, God. I was reading the bios, and I was like, oh, my God. I can't believe they're doing this. Like, I haven't even checked on them, because I'm like, let them just die this just, year. Yeah, just fizzle away. Fizzle yeah. away into the nothingness. Like, they're not welcome at RollerCon anymore, which is great. So, Motoskate, Bye. gone. Bye-bye. See ya. <laughs> they burned out in the tra- in the dumpster fire this year. Um, honestly, I feel like the only company that really, like got like called in and made like great changes was CIB which is now Chicks and Bulls like no no it was Chicks and Bulls and now it's a CIB crew yes so I feel like they listened to the skaters and grew with it and I feel like Moxie also like took in the call in and the criticism and grew from that as well yeah and I think that's the way you do it like it's a constant growing like I don't feel there's like there's no destination yeah it's not like okay we did it we're inclusive now yay check it off next page no it's like let's keep doing this yeah like no one's perfect Moxie's not perfect CIB's oh not I would perfect. say that Pigeon Skates has also done that yeah Pigeon Skates has been making amends because it wasn't even like they did anything but their yeah, name was Tardish was tied in with indies yeah so I feel like you know like people are learning and growing and that's what's great yeah and then some people are just horrible people, and now the world knows. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Whatever. Oh my gosh. And then we had Moonlight. Oh yeah, Moonlight popped up onto the scene. Not um, the skate rink, which a lot of us got confused about because we're like the problematic skate we rink. We were very confused, but now we get it. <laughs> um, Moonlight, Adrian is the first black woman to own a roller skate company. Yeah. That produces skates, which is amazing. Yeah, so we got another skate out there that has some cool colors and... That, the flash... Oh, shoot, I always forget what it's called. Safety the, the dance? The safety dance. The one that like lights up that is dope oh yeah it's like, so oh. cool i never seen any skate like that before <laughs> i was like what is yeah. happening i think they discontinued that one though so if you it's got it bad. you're lucky i wish i had it <laughs> but yeah so like and then the downside though to skating trending is that with the shortage of skates all these random skates started popping up oh the worst skates like just trash toy skates yeah and they all had like different company names but they were like made up skate companies yeah it was really weird there was a bunch of people trying to profit off the skate community and making really harmful skates that are gonna hurt people and then just kind of like being like these are three hundred dollars yeah oh my gosh which reminds me of facebook market and like macari and like uh, any resale like online group or app would sell like a hundred dollar skates for like a thousand dollars a thousand like just out of control. And people were buying. I don't understand <laughs> why they would do such a thing. Like, he, like all of a sudden, like, specifically, like, Moxie Lollies would Just become, like, supreme. Stupid. So, expensive. like, people could sell them for a thousand and people were like, yeah. Or people would buy as much as they could and then sell them for triple the amount. And people were buying it. Like, they're like, like they were literally making the joke, like, what, are skates, like, supreme now? Like so weird it makes no sense but i don't know which is causing like a lot of things a lot of people don't understand why it's taking like what fucking 10 months like i don't even know really really long a long long time for skates and it sucks it sucks so bad literally like even to understand why it's taking so long you have to like read all these deep dive into like understanding manufacturing (laughs) and like uh, what happens when a company like a not even a company like when a whole line of production is jammed yeah like since i feel like this year now that i'm more behind the scenes than in front of the scenes like i'm starting to understand more that everything that goes into making a roller skates and then like also why skates get stuck at freaking like at a port or at a railroad because of COVID. Like, there's so many things because it's a pandemic that's affecting this one skate. And it sucks because, like, I try to put myself in, like, a customer's view if, like, I had spent a lot of money on skates and, like, being told I have to wait six months. Like, I would be, like, freaking out, too. But, like, no. And I just keep trying to remember, like, what it would feel like if I was them. And then I got to be like, okay, like, I get it, you know? Yeah, but I also just think that maybe some people are forgetting that a pandemic is going on. Or that, like, the skaters, they 
know and love are the ones that they're emailing all and these hate at, messages. Yeah, I just think that that's interesting. <laughs> you want to know one of my weirdest things was this year too? Was like discovering on Reddit that there was like whole conspiracy theories about like me and you. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was definitely interesting. Like, I got lost in Reddit, and someone told me, don't do it, because you'll hate yourself afterwards. And I did it, and then I was like, that girl's Moxie. Uh, or, like, Courtney Shove, Moxie. And, like, people literally attach, like, links to posts in my past, and, like, all these conspiracy theories about, like, supposedly, like, why does Shove need to work? Because Rebel's a rich professor, which, hello, she's not even a professor yet, because you graduated when last year yeah last year yeah <laughs> so she's an adjunct like why would she have to work so many jobs if she's rich okay <laughs> yeah what i'm so okay and i'm pretty sure that i want to have a whole closet of fashion nova i'd be able to afford asos if i was rich but no <laughs> fast fashion queen because guess what we broke we might not be dirt poor the way we grew up where trust we grew up Poor AF, like 99 cent store. Poor, poor, poor. poor. Um, like food. Uh, food pantry <laughs> food poor. Food pantry poor. So definitely I feel like we think we're like fake rich or we're like when we do have a little bit of money, we don't know what to do. So like we go on a mini shopping spree and then we're like, oh no, should have paid that bill. Because <laughs> we don't, we, we're, we're just like getting it together. But like. We're getting it together. We we're can't buy everything money. we want, but we're like not struggling like we were you know it's still scary we're still not instead of being one paycheck away from being homeless we're two paychecks away from being homeless and i just got laid off from one of my jobs so maybe we're we're like one and a half paycheck away from being (laughs) homeless so um so if you want to sponsor your skate date next season (laughs) that'd be dope but um yeah so i don't know like that was just crazy to see like all these theories on reddit and like facebook uh, I do groups. think I thought it was funny that someone called me like a like the most famous roller skating YouTuber, oh, yeah. and I was like, "That's <laughs> definitely not true." Like, there's so many levels of like, untrue. Can she gets a 50k subscribers <laughs> at least, and then no, even then you can't. No, say most. not even kind of. I am literally at least a quarter. I'm only a quarter. I only have a quarter the amount of subscribers as the most famous one that I know. Yeah, yeah, the most <laughs> so, famous too. I know. Are like 100K. 100, over 100K. 120 ish and 240. Wow. Yeah. 240K. Yeah. So, and that person's trash. Um, <laughs> 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 oh my gosh. But yeah, so I just think like there were so many like random what the fuck moments of this year. But at the end of the day, like I found myself getting closer to certain people, which is great. And I really know like who's my best friends now. Me? Yeah, sure. <laughs> Um, and I just feel like also, like, there were times, I, I don't know, like, I don't know, like, it's just weird because, like, you are always be, like, one of those people that was, like, I have a hundred friends and blah, 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 but you're used to having friends that you see in person, and I think, like, you were, like, oh, okay, like, who do I call? Because I think you always talk about, like, oh, this person, you have to call them or they won't call you, but then I think now looking back at it, you were that person. Like, if someone doesn't reach out to you, you don't reach out. Yeah. And that's really crazy because, like, extra, the whole, like, thing about how, like, oh, what are extroverts going to do with this pandemic? And you're an extrovert. I have been a disaster this entire pandemic. But not as I... bad as I thought you'd be. Really? Yeah, I think you handled it pretty well, babe. Oh, thank you. I feel like I've had many breakdowns. No, you had more breakdowns last year. <laughs> yeah, I feel like I'm in my own personal level of hell in this house just, like, living here and not ever going anywhere and not seeing anyone but you know that's okay yeah uh, rebels for sure one of those people that are probably gonna be like on the news running down the street buck naked like woo party the world's back open oh i'm gonna get so drunk she's like wearing two of her old mask as like pasties (laughs) 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 oh my god Oh my god. But yeah, I don't know. Like, the skate community was just like, it was a thing. They showed the best of themselves and the worst of themselves yeah. this year. And I still love it so much. I love all of you so I fucking love you all so much. Because that's just, it's, 
it's the spirit. It's just the angst. It's, it's the like, grit. It's the grit of the skate community. The ride or die. Like, we will tear you to shreds or we will smother you with our love. But And there's no in between. There's and I literally none. I <laughs> can't be mad at that. I don't think I can be mad at that. That's why I fucking love this community. Yeah. I'd ride and die with y'all. Me too. All right. Well, that's, I think, it for the wheel world. Let's head on over to Two Girls, One Pup. Wake up, you bum. Yeah, like seriously. I don't you have like lint on your eye? <laughs> Say hi, Bowie. <laughs> <laughs> when he's the most silent is when he's put up to the microphone. I kind of heard him breathe. Yeah. Um, so, uh, 2020 with 20, Bobo. 2020 with Bowie. This so, was it. Home just to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Bowie slept through most of 2020, and also, Bowie is very, very happy. He got to spend more time with his two moms than he's ever got to spend because we were at home the whole time. I know. We kind of fort, we kind of got a pack mentality. He yeah. definitely thinks we're dogs now. We went through some ups and downs. He thinks he owns the place. He peed on our couch and we cleaned it up. But he only has peed on the couch like that one time. Because we were only gone from the house one time in 2020. (laughs) Yeah, we're still afraid that the separation anxiety is going to be real, real bad. So we're going to have to bring him everywhere because we are now Bowie's emotional support humans. Yes, that is so true. Like, literally. Like, look at how he just melted into my arms. Yeah, like we spent like... $800 $800 at the vet because of him this year because he decided to get like a wonky eye oh, yeah. and get like a patch and, and, and yeah, ear an infection. ear infection. A double ear infection. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Like it's been an interesting year with Bowie because like usually Rebel is like his favorite but then he, he really loved on me this year. Yeah, it was really nice. So I'm I, glad that he spread the love. Yeah, I got to bond with him which was great and you know, I think Bowie now officially feels like 100% our dog and part of our family. 100%. And last year it was like still new, like does he even like us? Why does he fart so much? Like he doesn't hardly ever fart now. No, he farts <laughs> a lot but just like while I'm at work. Not every 30 minutes it's like before <laughs> no yeah he used to fart a lot that was how we knew he was uncomfortable in the house still yeah he has almost as many fly outfits as we do now and yeah. scarves mm-hmm. he's ba- he's really baby he's oh, baby he's for baby sure. for sure he's so spoiled and he has taught us how to be wonderful moms so one day we can be good moms too another baby except a baby will never be this calm like something's our dog's broken our dog's broken our dog's a cat dog (laughs) (laughs) all right (laughs) thanks for hanging out with us bowie it's been real all right now we have deer shovel deer who deer Deer shovel 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 is us This is the part of the podcast where you all send in your questions to us, and then we answer your questions with good and or bad advice. (laughs) So basically, we just respond to your questions. (laughs) Um, And our question this time, I was going to say this year. This year. (laughs) One question question a year. 2020. What's the question? Good luck getting your question answered. (laughs) Dear Shovel, what are your... What? New- oh, what, are your- I'm ready, babe. what are your New Year's Eve revolu- resolutions? Wait, New Year's Eve? New Year- Wait, what? New Year's resolutions. Wow. <laughs> that. that. <What? laughs> are you going to ask it again? Or- <laughs> Fine. Dear Shovel, what are your New Year's resolutions? Just curious. Wow. Um. What a loaded question. I fucking hate new year's resolutions well i love them so i already made my list and checked it twice (sighs) santa claus i have new year's resolutions for my youtube channel and my business i have new year's resolutions for my personal self and then i have um podcast resolutions and i also have resolutions for our coupleness did you write a whole book of resolutions no i just wrote like three pages 
Okay, and for me, um, maybe part of the reason I don't care is because my birthday is exactly eight days after New Year's, so I think like, oh, now that I'm age blah, 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 like, this is what I hope I work on, which I guess is kind of the same, but yeah. then Rebel will make like a New Year's and a birthday one, and I'm like, well, isn't it the same? But <laughs> she's like, oh, my birthday's in March. It's around the time I forgot about my New Year's resolution, so let's just repeat the same thing. Yep. <laughs> Um, New Year's resolutions to me, I feel like specifically because I've always worked in like retail or a casino or a rest or a, not a restaurant, a, um, coffee shop. That's the word. Um, <laughs> I witness human nature. <laughs> so like it always gets really slow after New Year's one because people are broke from the holidays. So people are always like, my resolution is to drink less, to gamble less because I worked at a casino. Um, to be on a diet because I need to lose weight and I'm going to start working out and all this stuff. So like, oh, I'm going to quit coffee. So all of a sudden it slows down, but bet everyone comes back by March. Like three <laughs> months later, all of a sudden it's like sell skyrocket again because they always come back. Like yeah. no one holds it up. It's so hilarious. So even though you think that they're ridiculous, what are your like goals for this next year? Um, my goals for the next year, it's really up to COVID. And I think that's why I'm very like, because uh, a lot of it is things that I wanted to happen this year. I wanted to have the second annual Suns Out, Buns Out rollout that had uh, about 200 people at it. I wanted to have that happen this last year, but you know, gonna do it. So <laughs> maybe next year, COVID pending. And then I also wanted to go to either Australia or Italy or both because I would have been able to do both this year. I have a feeling. Do you mean Spain? Yes, Spain. <laughs> <laughs> because, uh, but yeah, I just wanted to go there for just random skate things and like to see the world because I've only left the country once. And I really thought this was going to be my year for travel. Yeah. Yeah, I wanted to like take my rollouts on the road and meet skaters all over the place. Yeah. Is that still your goal? What if COVID remains a thing? Do you have other goals? Well, I was going to say to not end my life. <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> my goal is to not necessarily be happy, but to be content with life. That's a good goal for you. It is a good goal because I feel like people set the bar, the bar so high. And for me, it's like, I'm just tired of having so many lows, so I am excited for my mental health journey. Like, I don't want to be like, I want to hit this many followers, and I want to do this for my business, and I want to, like, no. Like, I just want to be able to wake up and live the day and not crawl into a hole. Yeah, I think that <laughs> you're like... <laughs> Sorry I depressed everyone. <laughs> no, no, that's not it. It's more like, oh, that's a better goal than what I had in my head. <laughs> like, I was all like, I want to make 100K subscribers on YouTube. I'm and a I Capricorn want to. baby. You know, I'm a realist. You're a dreamer. That's why we balance each other out. Yeah, so I would love it if um, we could make our skate stuff a sustainable side hustle so it's not called a side hustle anymore <laughs> I would really really like that um I would love it if we continued to get close and if I would really like it if I actually learned how to like feed myself that would be cool because right now I only really eat real food if Shove <laughs> makes it for me truth and so if I was able to like just make food for myself I'd be super stoked I also I'd be stoked too I also kind of want to take that like year-long strip class by Ginger Valentine. <laughs> <laughs> and I feel like if I, like, I've always thought, like, I need to cross-train, right? Like, I've always thought that. Yeah. But, like, I'm not interested in any cross-training activities, but maybe this is the year that I've figured out my cross-training, and it's burlesque. I've always wanted to learn how to pole dance. <laughs> I mean, I feel like, why not? Like, it's the time, right? Yeah, but, like, I need a giant pole. We could put one right here. <laughs> I don't know. This is now called Welcome to Strip Date. <laughs> I think I would really love it if I, I really want to start a Twitch stream channel. Is that even what it's called? I just want to start a Twitch and I just want to stream myself like learning random shit. 
Uh, you know what? That's somebody's kink. Someone will be into it. No, I'm not trying to, I like, know. not like a kink. I don't mean like, like kink kink, but like someone will be into it, you know? <laughs> <laughs> like there's always something that someone's like, That's I would watch this yeah. and I'll tip you. Oh, you're crafting? You're learning how to make snowflakes today? Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> yes. Oh, she's practicing burlesque. And then you're wondering why the creeps come out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> My New Year's resolution is to continue doing this podcast. <laughs> And my resolution is to stop saying I quit this podcast every day we go to record. Did you notice I didn't say it today? So good. Already on it. Proud. But I'm also nervous about how long the next season's going to be. Yeah, it's a really long season. <laughs> what if I run out of things to talk about? 50 episodes. <laughs> <laughs> when we first started this, we were like, it's going to be bi-weekly. And then I was like, okay, that was fun. Like, we should just do it every week. And now I'm like, oh. Now we need twice the amount of ideas. I think it's fine. Yeah. Because we're just talking about what's going on in the world. I hope you all like us. Yeah, let us know if you like us. (laughs) Because we like you. Like, we want to come back. And we just invested. We, like, upped our game. So now we're, like, in it to win it. So you all better come back, too. (laughs) Is what we're saying. (laughs) For season two of Skate Day. Um, Yeah. So that's... That's that. I hope that we addressed your question, Just Curious. Yeah, we're going to be gone until January 6th, two days before my freaking birthday. Yeah, so (laughs) we have two weeks off. We're taking off the next two weeks, but then we will be back the first week of January. Yeah, so we hope you all have a very happy... What Chris Mahana um, Kwanzaa. Chris- I wanted to see it. Oh. Um, I never seen okay, it. Go. And I, I was practicing. Okay. And now I'm in my head. Let me okay, see if go. I get it. I hope you have a Merry Christmas. Oh, man. Never mind. Okay. Chris Mahana Kwanzaa. I practiced it earlier. Okay, Chris ready? Chris Mahana Kwanzaa. There you go. I don't want to say it anymore. No, okay, say it. do it again. I hope you have a very, very, very merry Chris Mahana Kwanzaa. Yay. <laughs> But yeah, so, and a happy new year, and we'll be with y'all after the holidays. We need to take a little shovel time. Yeah, take care of each other. Just hopefully not kill each other. No. <laughs> Ridiculous. Imagine season two, skate date, it's a solo date. And oh my just, gosh. Just me or just Rebel? Uh, just shove. If one of us, get out if alive. one of us kills the other, shove will kill me. Like <laughs> what? <laughs> they tune in and it's just heavy breathing and it's Bowie. Oh <laughs> my both, god! Both <laughs> no, that's so bad. It's I a hate, twist. Hate that. I hate everything about that. So yeah, well, you know, we have to like not really break up with y'all, but we're gonna take a break during the holidays. Yeah, because we need to see other people. Yeah, we need to see other people. Two weeks. But I hope we can go on another skate date, and I'll put you in my calendar in Sharpie for January 6th, 2020 fun. 2020 fun! <laughs> Stol- mm. Stolen from estrogen. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Thanks for hanging out with us. Bye!